warm welcome on behalf of Patients Today and Mama Mia from our this year's Congress reporting from ESCO. ASCO is the largest Congress um, and ASCO stands for the American Society of Clinical Oncology. And we are reporting together with Professor Harbeck. And it's my pleasure to um, present the studies that we select together. And Professor Harbeck is presenting them and I will join in a little discussion afterwards. So thank you for taking your time to uh, Spend it with us and discuss discuss the findings from ASCO. Yeah, it's a true pleasure doing that. And the last uh, study that we picked, or the last two studies, is actually the um, probably one of the practice changing studies, the Destiny Breast 09 study, which was presented in a special, specially added session to on, on Monday morning at the ASCO meeting before the regular program and um, it's a study in her to positive metastatic disease in patients that didn't receive any prior treatment for their metastatic disease and what it did was it looked at the current standard which is a taxane plus dual HER2 blockade trastuzumab pertuzumab versus TDXD the antibody drug conjugate um, trastuzumab deruxtecan plus pertuzumab which is an antibody or um, plus placebo. And um, the study recruited almost 1,200 patients. Primary endpoint was a progression-free survival. The results that were presented at the ASCO meeting is the one arm with TDXD plus P plus pertuzumab versus standard of care. Um, this was an interim analysis that was pre-planned and this arm reached the significance level. That doesn't mean that the monotherapy on TDXD is much worse. It just meant that at that particular time point, it wasn't, um, it didn't hit the uh, significance uh, boundary, which was a very high hurdle to begin with because it's an interim analysis. So we're looking forward to seeing that monotherapy arm then at the final analysis. So for the time being, it's TDXD plus pertuzumab versus standard of care. And it's amazing to see how much better TDXD plus P is versus standard of care, which is already very good and has been our standard of care for quite a while. But here you see it's 70, it's it's 40.7 months versus 26.9 months hazard ratio, almost double doubling the progression-free survival with 0.56. Um, also the different time points showed significantly better results and there was also higher efficacy. So if you look at the primary analysis, you can see here um, PFS is much longer at every time point. There's about 15 to 20 percent of patients more being progression free with um, TDXD plus P than with our already very effective standard of care. If you look at the side effects, they're quite comparable, nothing special there. There is a particular side effect with TDXD that is rare, but can be very severe. It's this pneumonitis or ILD, um, which is usually low grade and goes away quite fast when patients get steroids. But there are some um, cases where it develops into a more serious um, side effect and actually two patients and the study died of this side effect, something that we have to take very seriously. And I will talk about it in the next next abstract a little bit more. So overall, the conclusions of the trial are that this is a positive registration trial. TDXT plus pertuzumab could be a new first-line standard. The median PFS is 14 months longer, so more than a year longer um, compared with the standard of care. And the safety profile is quite what we already know. So my take-home message is that this could be a new standard of care. All of these drugs are approved in this setting, but not together and not in this particular first line of therapy. So we have to wait for an approval extension, but um, this can very well lead to the new approval. And obviously, we're not so sure whether pertuzumab is actually needed in combination with TDXD. So we would like to see the monotherapy arm as well. Before we discuss, let me quickly show you one more um, abstract, which I think was practically very relevant. And it's a, 
a study where colleagues uh, from four cancer centers pulled their data on patients on TDXD, mostly from breast cancer, but also from some GI or gynecological malignancies, and then looked at the fact if there is grade one ILD, which means that there is a finding on the x-rays, on the CT scans, but no symptoms, whether if that goes away, um, the drug can be given again. And um, there was 712 um, patients treated with TDXD from 2017 to 2024, but 9% of these patients developed an ILD and 47 were re-challenged after um, their ILD resolved. The majority after grade one, which is imaging, no symptoms, but there was also nine patients after grade two ILD, which is not permitted in the package insert um, so it's a very individual decision and grade two means that there's finding on imaging, but also patients have symptoms. So the question is, can we resume TDXD after ILD has resolved? What are the time courses of doing this? Uh, how important is it to give steroids? And um, what are the results um, after resuming the therapy? So. Um, the answers are very practically relevant. So the median time until IED developed is 145 days, which means that this is a, a toxicity that comes in the first year of treatment. Then the majority of patients um, got uh, steroids. And with steroids, this grade 1 ILD resolved a lot faster than without steroids, 24 versus 82 days. And then patients could resume the therapy in a median of 42 days after the last cycle. Usually you do it after three weeks. So it's a bit delayed, but not by much. And the median duration of treatment after resumption of therapy was 215 days. So meaning that this actually helped a lot of patients for quite a while. And the ILD reoccurrence rate after grade one, after grade two is quite similar around 25%. That means that if if one resumes the therapy, one needs to be very, very alert um, regarding another episode of ILD. So the conclusions of the authors were that it's safe to re-challenge after grade one um, resolution. Steroids help to make this all quicker because, I mean, you have to give the therapy certain intervals in order to fight the cancer. Patients benefit from this re-challenge and um, the data of the nine patients with re-challenge after grade two ILD is experimental. As I said, it's not in the package insert, but I think in the individual cases, if the um, ILD resolves really fast with the steroids and the treatment benefit to the patient is a great one. I think one can discuss this, but this has to be done uh, on an individual basis. And my take home from, from this abstract is basically that ILD is a serious side effect. We have to educate our patients, but also our staff about it. Early detection and treatment is important. And TDXD can be rechallenged after grade one and in individual cases, maybe after grade two, if it had responded well to therapy before. But this needs close monitoring and patients need to be educated quite well about this. Yeah, thank you very much. That is, um, certainly I have already questions about the ILD. Um, if you say that you see them in imaging, but the patients don't have any symptoms yet, um, but they have a cough or something. I mean, some cold symptoms, do they? I mean, what is the time to go to the doctor and say like, well, maybe I think there is, I'm suspicious there could be something wrong with my lung, being aware that there is the possibility of developing ILD. I mean, we tell them to come immediately if there is symptoms and then we have to decide whether these symptoms uh, belong to ILD or whether it's a cough just because the child had a cough, brought it home from kindergarten or so. So I think in the winter, it's more difficult to do the differential diagnosis. But what we will certainly do is do a CT scan, see whether there is any 
infiltrates in the lung that look like ILD. And then we have to sort of differentiate whether the symptoms are related to that or whether the symptoms are completely independent. But it's better to come too soon than not to come. And, and, and uh, patients always afraid that they would bother the team over the weekend or so. But if there is symptoms, breathing symptoms, please come as soon as you can and we'll sort this out. Well, it's good to know that, you know, that steroids work quite well and then can get you back on track quite quickly. And, and, and it's, it's very promising to see that you still have the option to continue the treatment, even though you had ILD. Um, so that gives another option in, in therapy, which is great news. So the only thing is to wait for the second arm if TDXD is uh, effective uh, by itself as well in the same way. Uh, but it's very promising data. And um, yeah, let's watch the space, what, what's coming around the corner, what seems to be just around the corner. Um, thank you very much for taking your time to report from ASCO with me, Professor Habeck, on behalf of Patients Today and Mamma Mia, and everybody who's watching. I thank you for your time, your patience, and always the very good explanations that leave me very little room to put many questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.